You know, you can't build stories out of nothing. It's been a lot of discovery, even more so than what you normally have in a renovation project like this. One of my colleagues describes older buildings as being, uh, thinking of it as a building is a document. That's how the history of a place works. It builds on, it's like a, it's like a story, like a book. You know, it has chapters and you write the next chapter, but the chapter doesn't make sense without the previous chapter. And as you work with a building, you uncover the layers of what past generations have done. You know, it's because they did things as a family. They would do things ad hoc and, and patch it here and there as needed. And now to implement proper mechanical services and proper plumbing and drainage, to hide all of that within the building where it was completely exposed before has been quite a challenge and, and it has resulted actually in quite interesting forms. The architecture is really authentic and has a lot of restrictions and a lot of challenges and great opportunities um, because it's of um, national interest, of heritage interest. On the interior side we can loosen up a little bit, we can layer some newer things over that and then with the branding we can be really expressive and really contemporary. So that gives us a really nice palette to work with, um, you know, to take something that has history, um, layer it with all of the little bits of history that, it, that it's accumulated over time and then give it something that's really relevant to what it is today. We responded with a new layer of design which celebrates the old but doesn't necessarily copy it. it adds a new generation's intervention into the building. It evolves, becomes something else. It builds on another layer. It, it, it changes. It's like people, it's like, you know, when you say, okay, as you get older, you must, you must change your whole appearance so that you're going to look young forever. And uh, this particular project is certainly had many layers dating back to about 1920, uh, where it went through a change from being an apartment building to a hotel. The essence of make, what makes the architecture, I think that it's a, if you don't retain some of that, you can lose the identity. It's really important to keep the integrity of the original building so people can get that sense of place from visiting the site. At the same time, you've got to add a layer for modern functionality and to give them a unique decape experience as well. But it's really important for us to retain a sense of identity. This building brings us many, many blessings, as many blessings as challenges. Um, it has a great, really, really rich, rich history. Everything in the building has been collected over a very long period of time. And there's still remnants of apartment building, like the old milk boxes. Um, they, when it was an apartment building, a courtyard uh, used to be for vehicles and the carriages and early cars would drive up through what is now the foyer and reception into the courtyard and the floors actually slope, they're not level, um, which is like an interesting challenge when you're trying to put furniture into the building nowadays. <laughs> So our job really is to take all of that and put it together in a way that feels fresh and new for a contemporary market and to do that right now. Speaking as a heritage architect, there's always that the ad shouldn't try and copy because copying, in other words, taking taking which is to match it and saying, if, okay, well, I'm going to... Uh, double it in size. If you built another building next to it, 
and copied the architecture exactly, that's not going to make Winchester Mansions more important. It's going to start looking fake. Because now you're saying, which is real? Which isn't real? Why does it? Oh, there's this other one. Oh, no. Oh, that's, oh it isn't the same build. Oh, that's much later. Oh, it's a copy. Then it starts becoming false. That's when identity becomes false. So I think we've retained a lot of that quality and, and then added some things to, you know, the, especially the entrance, the reception space is quite narrow and never was meant to have a staircase and a whole um, lift core within that. And instead of, you know, fighting it, we actually made portions of it tighter and held each space as you move through as a journey from the street to the courtyard. You know, we are contemporary. We live here right now in this time, in this place. So we're not creating a stage set. We're not creating a museum. We're creating something that is for contemporary users, but for contemporary users that appreciate um, a sense of style from a bygone era that has a sense of romance, a sense of nostalgia. Um, and so we've used elements, uh, but always just to just as a reference point, um, always as something that um, evokes a feeling of something else or kind of points in a certain direction, but never really something to try and emulate exactly what was there before or what we thought was there before. And there's this play between old and new and old and new. And, and to me, that's, that's how you, because then you're setting up a dialogue between old and new. You aren't throwing one out and plastering over it. You're actually setting up a kind of a conversation. How does a story which which was something else before, how does it tell a new story? It's it's that kind of way of allowing that dialogue and not allowing it to be schizophrenic. A big part of its worth to society and, and to those who own it and those who visit it are those quirky layers and the stories associated with them. And, and, and I think we've enjoyed working with those and discovering them, and it's nice to share them. And you can, it enables you to, to, to talk about it and, and, and other people to bring it in, you know, so, so if it's a place which if people come to, you, you, allow, you, you can start entering and talking about it because you, you're looking at one and then the other and you can, you can have a conversation. One of the biggest trends we've seen coming for the last for the last ten years, but has really sped up in the last five years, is people are looking for properties that are unique, um, that have authenticity, and that have a story. Um, and so many times we actually have to make a story because the story doesn't exist, and we have to invent some kind of authenticity. And this building, really, from that point of view, is an absolute dream. It has all the authenticity, it has all the unique qualities. It has a family, it is family owned, it's family run for so many generations. Um, it has all of those elements. It really is exactly what um, the contemporary traveling market is really looking for. Um, a unique property in a significant location with a really rich history, but a contemporary slant in how they present hospitality. Now, Cape Town has always been a tourist destination, you know, which is why at Sea Point, areas like that, popular as places People came to the Cape, they went to Musenberg. Cape Town was always a destination, very conscious of the image it presented. It was you know, before we had, when it was still, people came by boat on the Union Castle. Where did they dock? Cape Town. Cape Town was the gateway to Africa.